I came to this country three decades ago with a promise to myself and my mother-in-law, who was very against our coming, that I was going to give jobs over here, not take jobs. And that started on looking for a business. And we bought a deli in Oakland, California, where we learned all our business lessons, mainly what things we were not supposed to do. We ran the Delhi for a year and we had the Loma Prelata earthquake and 30% of the businesses around us broke the leases and moved out and subsequently our clientele also went down and suddenly from a place that we were making money, we started losing money. I had to let go some of my staff and also think up new ways of uh, supplementing my income because that was not going to be enough. So I started doing Indian catering on the weekends and also making sauces and putting them on my counter, which started selling. I also found topmost ethnic stores in the Bay Area, which was Berkeley Bowl and Monterey Market, and they started selling my sauces. Crime rate in Oakland kept growing. And one day, Christmas Eve, a friend of mine had come to pick up her order and a man walked in and held a gun to her head. I just told him, just leave her alone, take what you don't want to. So we gave him all the cash I had, but that decided me. I was not going to keep running the deli. I was going to sell it for whatever. It was not worth my life. So that's what we did. We put it up for sale and something that we had bought for 175,000, we sold for 60,000 and got out. But again, you know, somewhere something was guiding me into the right thing. I'd already started making these sauces and doing catering on the weekends. And making these sauces and the response I got at the stores, I had this instinct that this was something that I need to grow and do much better. So I told my husband, I said, I'm not going to get into a job situation because then I won't be able to do this. So he turned around and said, who's going to buy your spice mixes over here? I said, I have this gut feeling is going to work. I need to give it two years of my life. If it doesn't work, I'll quit. Once he agreed, then he gave me his 110% support. In the first year of doing this, I got into 130 barrier stores. Every time there was something which came my way, which helped me along, which I, wasn't, I hadn't gone out looking for. But finally at 130 stores, I took stock of it and I said, how many more do I have to get into? Because I didn't have any distribution. The company was too small. I couldn't get a distributor to distribute it. So what would I have to do to make a living out of this? And I was doing a demo at Whole Foods in Palo Alto and this lady came by and took my stuff, tasted it. She says, you know, I love your products. Never go out of business. So that gave me a good chance to ask her. I said, this is a person who loves the product. So I said, let me get some numbers from her. So I asked her, so how many times do you cook Indian food? She said, well, I eat at home three times a week and I definitely cook with it once a month. That bottle, which would cook four pounds of chicken curry, would last her four months. So that gave me a number that, you know, what do I need to do to make a living again out of this? She was checking out her groceries and I sat, I was checking out for my lunch and I saw in her, in her basket, she had four frozen meals and she had one bottle of mine. I said, she's going to come back to buy these meals again next week. And my bottle is going to last her four months. So that told me that the direction I was headed in and that I was very determined not to get into refrigerated foods because that meant freezers and distribution in, in ice and stuff. But that told me this is not the way I'm going to survive. I need to do something different. And we changed gears. We started selling refrigerated products. I went to buy the health permit and they wouldn't give me a health permit for a week. They said, no, you have, if you want it, you have to buy the whole year. Now, $250 at that time was a lot of money for me, but I decided to take the plunge. And we went to the farmer's market in Corte Madera, which was an afternoon market. And I sold $400 the very first day and came back and we knew that we'd found something which was going to help us along. We just grew at the farmer's markets. That was our cash cow. In the meantime, I got somebody from a food service unit in Palo Alto. She called and said she wanted a tandoor. And I said, so what are you doing with the tandoor? I went to see it and I found she, she was standing on top of this huge brazier, roasting the onions, trying to make a sauce. And I said, why do you want to do this? Buy my stuff and this $10 an hour employee can make it for you. You don't need to do this. That was a big break I got because she got very excited 
and wrote a program of Indian food for her company, which was Sodexo. I got numbers, telephone numbers from her for Sodexo all over the country. And I would take a red eye from the Bay Area to the East Coast, wherever I needed to go, do marketing there, three appointments in a day, go back at night and then ship them all the stuff by UPS. So now I had three streams of, of income going because the farmer's markets were seasonal and then that this food service was going to help us go through the winter. Doing the farmer's markets, the exposure was huge. We were, were doing, at that time, we were doing about 20 farmer's markets a week. And in every farmer's market, we have about 250 to 400 people tasting the product. We got exposed and we found Whole Foods and then we found Costco. Some of them came and tasted the product and I got an opportunity to go and show it to them. And we started doing business with Whole Foods. They were starting hot bars. So they wanted bulk Indian food. So I was started giving them chicken tikka masala and, and other entrees in five pound bags. I needed no labels. I just slapped on a label printed on an inside printer. No packaging, plastic bags were what was coming in everywhere. And that gets, put us in the road over there. So for some time, we were very happy. We were growing, we were growing quite well. And then I came to a point, I didn't know what to do. I was, any business came to our way, we were, I would look at the numbers and say, yeah, we can make money. But I had a f instinct that, you know, I'm not growing strategically. I really don't have a course picked out. I'm just doing what comes in front of me. So I shared this with my children who by that time had joined the business with me. And I said, you know, we need to do something else. I don't know what to do anymore. Again, somebody was looking after us. Some a gentleman came and said, I know I can make this company grow. We looked at him, we talked to him for a couple of months, and then all of us felt very good about it. We went with him. We hired him as the CEO. And luckily again, when he joined us, six months later, my husband's kidney started failing. So I needed to put all my time into this thing. And, this gentleman took over the company and did a fantastic job. He rationalized cues. For me, at that time, it served both purposes. I didn't need to get, uh, I mean, I wasn't stuck all day long at work. I could do what I wanted to because I knew he was taking charge and making it grow. It gave me time to sit back and reflect on what are the lessons I learned as we went along. The first was that I was not going to wait for my customer to walk in. I was going to create a business where I, I could go and change my customer. If business fell off at a certain area, I could go to another area and change my direction as I wanted. One thing I'd realized is that uh, I wasn't enjoying running a retail business where I'm waiting every day. It's rain today, there are no customers coming for lunch or, or business moved out of there. So all the customers went off with it. So I was going to get into a manufacturing business where I could go and sell my product, whether it was in the Bay Area or it was in New York or Florida, I could go and sell it. And that's what really helped me a lot to get my business on a stable uh, footing. Going on, also I realize now that you also need to know when you don't know anymore. I didn't know the retail industry. I came in this country at middle of my life. I hadn't grown in it. So hiring this gentleman was the best decision we made. And we, I didn't put any roadblocks in his way. Whatever he wanted to do, I gave him a free rein. And that again was the best decision to make. So now that I have handed over the reins of the business to this gentleman and I have all the time in the world to decide what I'm going to do with the fourth quarter of my life, which is as my favorite poet said, we have no, at that time I had no time to stand and stare, but now I have the time to stand and stare and stand, sit below the boughs and watch all the, these cows going by. And also to do what I've always wanted to do is help other people in their careers and get my satisfaction from their growth now in their lives.